The great thing about veneer is it comes sequential. Okay, it's exactly in order how it was cut from the log. So, so when you look at it, that's where we can get these fun things like book match and slip match. A book match, by the way, just so that we know, is where it, every piece is in exact sequential order how it was cut from the log. But that's where, uh, on a book match, as we tape these together, we'd flip these two pieces over and we get this re recurring pattern. Slip match would be simply where you just take all of your pieces and you just fan them out tape them back together and you get a, a reoccurring pattern but not a booked type pattern. So book match, slip match. But the one that people really get the biggest kicks out of are radial matches. Radial matches where we can take a table and we can have pieces of a pie that all come in and meet at a point. Okay, radial matches. In order to do a radial match, you have to have however many pieces, they have to be in sequential order, that you want to have in your pieces of pie. Okay, so if we have a, and by the way, you have words that are called ways, W-A-Y-S. So if we were to take this right now, this would be a four-way match. Each piece would be cut at 90 degrees to the other. Uh, an eight-way match, each one of these would be a 45-degree angle, but we'd have to have eight pieces all in perfect sequential order in order to do this. If we do a 12-way match, and I'll just go off this quadrant here, each piece would have to be a 30-degree angle. Ultimately, we have to add up to 360. Um, if we do um, a 16-way match, each one of these would have to be at 22 and a half degrees. And if we do a 24-inch way match, each one of these would be at a 15-degree angle. Okay, so so each piece of the pie tells me uh, the specific angle, but more importantly, how many pieces I have to have in order to make a perfect radial match. Okay. So for me today, I happen to have uh, 12 pieces of veneer here, so I can do a 12-way match. I think I have 12. I counted them a couple times. I could have 13, but, uh, but it's, uh, I have more than 12, and that's the good news. The first thing you need to do anytime you do a radial match is you have to understand uh, that we've got to go through and number our parts. You need to go through and just verify that each piece is perfectly in sequential order, and sometimes it's just like... You know, when you used to make cartoons when you were a kid and you'd draw the drawings and you'd flip through it, a lot of times you can just find one specific mark or color or change of grain and just flip it and just look and make sure that that same little speck goes the same all the way through. If all of a sudden you see it jump way over here and then keep going and we've got a piece out of sequence. Once you're sure you've got them in perfect sequential order, how they were cut from the log, then it's a good idea to go through and number them. One, with a piece of chalk. Two, three, four, and so on, so that if we uh, drop it, we can get it back in order again really quick. Okay, so, so sequential veneer is important. They have to be exactly lined up. Once you get them lined up right where you want them, then it's a good idea to go through and to tape the whole bundle together so that it doesn't move or shift on me. And again, you have to be certain that, uh, that the knot here is exactly above the little knot on the piece underneath. So these guys that, that do these things for a living, they'll just spend hours and hours making sure that they've got it all exactly the way it was cut from the log. Then they go through, and uh, I'll save a little bit of time here. So you and can't necessarily rely on the edge of the No. Veneer. You know, the log itself is curved. And when they cut it sometimes, the, the log, the pieces, a shift like a deck of cards moving this way when a knife comes down in, and then they stack them all back up against a straight edge. They're not exactly straight edges. Or they're straight edges, but they're not exactly straight up and down edges. Okay, so once we get it all taped together, then we're ready to start to talk about our radial match. Now, if I were to just take a uh, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle with the, with the uh, 30 degree angle on it, if I were to just put it right here and just start knifing this edge and knifing this edge, and I don't have a clue what this thing's going to look like when it's done. I don't have a clue. Until I get done and take those 12 pieces and put them in order. So what we do is we can use a mirror to visualize it. Now, by using a mirror, there are two things that we look for in veneer. We want to have color contrast, number one, or variety of grain. So my little packet here, I have some different samples. This is a... This is what I call uh, grain change, grain cut. This, is, this would be great to do a radial match with because you've got such a broad range of what the grain does. Uh, this one 
although it's, it's, this is olive wood, and when you look at it, it's not like the most pretty wood in the world. But this, is, this stuff here is just killer when it comes to doing radial matches. Um, this wood here, the zebra wood, it, it would be the most boring wood you've ever seen because the grain's pretty much straight and all the way through. It just doesn't have much impact. Burls. Everybody wants burls to do radial matches, to be honest with you. Uh, burls have very little impact on a radial match. How can we tell? Well, if, if just to give you an idea, because I've got this color range in this particular piece, if I were to take my triangle, and if it were to come in at this angle, just at random, I took a mirror, then taped together, so I've got two mirrors. By the time I put my mirror around that, uh, if I were to cut 12 pieces in exact sequential order right there, this is what it would look like when it's done. Can you see that? You see, I wouldn't have known that had I just gone and just started cutting. But I, but I do know now exactly what I'm doing. And what you see in the mirror is a book match. So that's going to create some issues for me when I go to tape it together. And if I, if I just were to change this, I'm going to change it a quarter of a degree one way. Let me show you what effect that would have. So see, I, I only moved that maybe a quarter of an inch from where it was before, and now I get something completely different. So this is why when we do radial matches, we spend hours and hours and hours going through and getting just exactly the right look that we want. Now that's what happens with color, the contrast of color. If you look at grain and how grain will affect it, if we do the same thing again, where we get this real crazy change going on here. And now I can kind of get that kaleidoscope effect and you get a, a, a pattern that's created by grain as to the color. Okay, so, and again, just at random, that's just where I've set it down. So, right now, if, if we've got these all taped together, good and tight, uh, again, I would play where I've got uh, maybe the grain thing going on, but I like that little speck of color going on there and there and there. So, I would start, play with it. Let's just see what this looks like. Now, the impact of this is... Um, a little less subtle. It might be a little bit harder to see, but again, it still gives me kind of a, a, a neat look in the center. You guys have to tell me if you can see that okay. Okay. So let's just say that this is what we decide to go for on this particular grouping. Here's what we would do. 